This is Andreas Pop Culture Guy. Today we have our latest Andreas Pop Culture Retrospective slash review, and it's on Trent Daniels Django Unchained. Well, now, come on. Django Unchained by Quentin Tarantino is the most contained piece of movie making since his Pulp Fiction days. Some of it is particularly in the first half. It's extremely funny, and all of it has been brought off in the spirit of a bold, crested, mirrored of valley absurd, pushed to the level of beyond satire. That's the place where Tarantino is happiest. Out of, well, out at the age, or out of the age, playing with Sandra Conventions and turning expectations inside out, guiding up the violence to uh, ex uh, exploitation movie levels. The film is in two parts. The first half is a mock western. The second is a mock French middle drama about slavery set in the deep south and ending in, count, uh, in fountains of re-adapted swearing blood. Django is a hub is, well, Django is a master for me. It's one of my favorite Tarantino films, second after uh, Jackson Brown, uh, in my opinion, as my favorite of the Tarantino films. Which, uh, just because of the earliest and repetitive rich of jokes and brutalities in this film, including some of the old South cruelties that Tarantino invented for himself. It's a very strange movie, blurry with uh, sadistic and morally ambitious at the same time. The audience is definitely alive to it, revealing in this mood to is enjoying what's left for me and profoundly, or profoundly over the time, or profoundly language, over the top language, I would say. Django Unchained is a gruesome depiction of what life is for a slave, what it's like during the 1858 pre-Civil War, Texas, as well as a glimpse of existence outside the slave industry, such as Dr. King uh, Swords, uh, played by Christopher Waltz, and his second Oscar winning role after the Glorious Bastards role. And case, or of course, relating to the main villain, the roughly common, excuse me, or the main villain, the roughly common candy, played by Lido DiCaprio. It's a highly interior film which simultaneously disturbs and thrills you at the same time, while also incorporating a healthy dose of humor throughout the film. He films, well, Tarantino films as described as a spaghetti wrestler due to the mountain violence involved as well, simultaneously being a black exploitation film in a western film. The main hero of the film is Django, a black character, and this is contrast with the other 19th centuries. Western films where the central hero is often white, such as John Wayne's character in The Searchers. It's also uncommon for a German character to be shown as a hero in this film, Sandra. Django's main goal is to locate and save his wife, uh, Brune Hill, from the self, self trade. Although the film is violent in nature and comedic belief is throughout the film, for example, when Brune, uh, the wife, Brune Hill, faints at the sight of Django after he says, Hey, Little troublemaker to which Waltz replies, "Your sil, your single tongue devil, you." Pasty, the the pasty is apparent when the clansmen are prepared for a raid. The man breaker over the quality of the mask provided for them, and this allows the spectator, the audience, to laugh or poke fun at the characters simultaneously watching the film. Like this. as I said, bringing up the humor is really good in this film. It's used as a tool to help the audience cope and. Cope and with the uh, gory imagery and the overall negative themes that this film is employing about Sliff. Now, a hyper variety is evident in Django King as the film mimics a fictional world. Scorch tells Django about the famous German myth concerning a princess named Brunhild, just like his wife, who is held and captured by a first dragon until she is finally saved by a human. This relates to Django's main attempt to free his wife and adds to the fairy tale notion. Common Candy's estate is referred to as a candy land, which has a rather positive connection. Connotations. However, not really is that candy land is where Brunel and other slaves are kept as prisoners. Another aspect of the What's more in Django is the intertext used, just as the reference to other films. To conclude, 
Tango and Chain is a well running film which deals with an area of interest throughout its um, runtime. So it's infinitely postmodern in nature, but as it presents its as aspects of the postmodern theories, just as intertextilate. So, to wrap up this review, I highly recommend watching Jake Ocean. It's a great film. But it's not much to say about it. This one's awesome. It's badass. It's one of the best television films since Pulp Fiction. It's one of my first and second favorite after Jack Brown. So, everyone, go watch it. Have a good week, guys. And see you guys later. Ciao.